Hey everybody, welcome back to VideoMSO. Today we're continuing the series Emulation Night School, where I show you how to set up some of the most popular emulators, get all your games in the right folders, get your controllers working, go through all the diverse video options for you. And today, if you can't tell already, we're talking about arcade games, and that means we're talking about MAME. Because I get a lot of comments on different videos where people are having issues setting up certain games in MAME, and I've seen a few Twitter threads recently saying that MAME is not very user-friendly. While it might not be the prettiest application in the world, if you follow along with this guide to understand what MAME needs from you, it'll become infinitely easy. Before you get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined as well, you can support the channel with the Patreon link down below. And I do have a new $10 Patreon tier in case you need personalized help with any of this emulation setup. The first thing we need to do though is download MAME. We go over to the MAME website and this is a Windows tutorial, but the basics are going to work for everything. You're going to see two pages right here, official Windows binary packages and official source code package. Unless you're planning on compiling MAME yourself from the source code, you want the official Windows binary. And if you do know how to compile the source code, you're probably not watching this tutorial because you definitely know how MAME works and a lot of high level concepts from there. And definitely take a look at the newest releases of the time of this recording, it's MAME.261. They usually update every month or every other month, and you can take a look and see whether or not you want to update your MAME based upon what's going on. But MAME is not an installer. Wherever you unpack it is where it lives. Create a folder anywhere on your computer where you want your MAME installation to be, and then you go ahead and just double click on the self-extracting application. You may get a notification that you're not allowed to run this. Just hit more info and run anyway. There's absolutely nothing wrong with anything on the MAME website. I've been installing MAME this way for years. Trust me, just ignore that warning. You'll see where I have MAME here. It's a desktop in a MAME school folder. This is just for the setup guide. So put it wherever you want it to live and then click extract. It takes about three to four seconds, honestly. And for some strange reason, my desktop decided not to show me all the icons for like four or five seconds. So something about the extractor was just a little bit delayed. It must've been running in the background. Not sure on that. So if you see that, don't worry about it whatsoever. And then from there, you're going to see MAME.exe. That is MAME. If we take a look inside of it, and I am zooming in a bit because this will match your monitor's resolution, and I have ultra-wides, this is all of the games that MAME will run. It's an encyclopedia of arcade releases. And if I go ahead and hit enter on anything, it's just going to give me a warning at this stage because I do not have the appropriate files for something like 88 games. Anytime you see a red warning like this, that means you are missing something. And what I'm going to talk about is the multiple different varieties of files you can inject into MAME's ROM folder and how they work. Taking some games I own here, Violent Storm and California Speed, you're going to see one has a CHD file with it. This seems to trip so many people up. This is a compressed hunks of data file. This is basically a hard drive image. Once we extract it into our ROMs folder, you're going to see it's CalSpeed hyphen CHD. This is what it extracts to. If you leave it like this, you are not going to get any CHD game to run. Within it are multiple hard drive images. You need to rename all of the CHD folders to remove CHD, and the folder name needs to match the ROM name. I'm still making mistakes here though intentionally because I have calspeeda.zip. Though it seems like I've set everything up correctly, but if I try to launch California Speed, the 2.1a revision, it is going to give me a warning. MAME has what are called parent ROMs. There's going to be one file that's always going to be the parent, and then there might be revisions under that. I'm going to show you in just a moment how to find out exactly the files you need, because it is important to do research when using MAME. Now you'll see here I have the appropriate zip file, calspeed.zip, but I've changed the folder's name to calspeed A because if you got the wrong zip file off the top, you would have renamed the folder for the CHD the same thing. Just go ahead and remove that A just for the example of California Speed. What I want you to understand here is the parent ROM will not have that A, B, or C after it for the most part, and your CHD folder has to match that name. Now when I go back in to MAME and I select the appropriate version of California Speed, the 2.1a revision, and hit enter or any other button, it is going to launch. This is how you know you have the appropriate files. Now I'm going to show you a website in a couple minutes that will allow you to research what every single game needs file-wise so that you know you have everything set up correctly. Because what MAME will not explain to you is what files go together. Those are in databases of information that are in other places on the internet. 
but once you get something like this set up, you're going to be able to play those games that need CHD files. Now those might be hard drives, they might be disk images, all CHD is is a compression algorithm to allow for large format storage to be ingested in MAME. Sometimes, like I said, it's a hard drive, other times it could be a DVD-ROM or a CD-ROM. But CHD games seem to throw everybody off. They don't realize that you need to rename the folder to the exact file name as the zip file. So say you had a game called Bob, B-O-B. You have bob.zip and you unpack the chd zip file, you end up with a bob-chd folder. Just remove the hyphen chd from the folder and as long as bob.zip matches the bob folder, you're going to be good to go. But something like California Speed here, at least on my system, runs incredibly. But let's talk about how to get your controls set up. You need to plug in your controllers before you launch MAME. It will not look for controllers in my experience unless you have them plugged in before you launch the application. If you want to make sure that everything's working correctly, just hit enter on the controller you want to play around with, and you can push every single button and it will register on screen. Analog values are going to be negatives or pluses. Everything else is going to be a zero or one for digital buttons. And if you do that, you're going to be able to control your games, but sometimes you do need to bind controls per game. If you hit the tab button, you'll see you can go to input settings and input assignments to this system. This is going to allow you to bind every single input this arcade board or any other arcade board you're running in MAME supports. Something like the radio here, I've got it bound to keyboard N, but maybe I want to put that on my actual Xbox Series X controller. Just hit enter for whatever you want to rebind and the screen is going to go blank. From there, press once the button you want, wait a second, and it will rebind your controls. For the most part, MAME is really good at auto binding, but if a game has more inputs than you have buttons, sometimes you have to go in there and toggle things around. And sometimes you have most of your controls on a controller or steering wheel, and a couple of them on the keyboard for extra inputs. But honestly, once you do this part, you're going to be getting the CHD games running. And that's why I started with this first, because they are one of the more complicated things to run on MAME. Every time someone asks me for help because they can't get a game running, 99 out of 100 times it's a CHD game, and it's because they either don't have the CHD file at all, or they did not change the file name of the folder. That hyphen CHD, it always unpacks to that, and you absolutely never can use it whatsoever, and that confuses so many people. But now that we've gotten racing on California Speed and we took second place, there's a lot more to learn about MAME, and I'm going through three different types of games here. Let's take a look at something like Violent Storm. Now this is just a ROM. I have the arcade board in my closet. It's just a zip file. So long as the zip file is a good version and it's in the ROMs folder, you're going to be able to play the game no big deal whatsoever. But if you take a look at the screen here, maybe you haven't noticed it yet, but there's something about this image that I don't think is correct and by default MAME leaves on. No judgments against the MAME team, they are the decision makers and they put it on. I just think we need to turn it off. So if we go back into general settings under video options, by default bilinear filtering is turned on for MAME. I wish this was an off by default and on because you chose to do it. If you want to get those pixel perfect raw chunky pixels coming out of MAME, you want to turn bilinear filtering off because now you can see in Violent Storm, everything is blocky and it looks a lot better. That's just how I like to look at my 2D games. I think it's the majority of you would tend to agree, but leave me a comment down below and tell me about that, what your opinion on it is. Now I did move back to the bilinear version here, but I want to talk about how you actually change options. There's multiple ways to change the options on an arcade game and everything does something slightly different. Just be aware that the F2 key button in MAME is going to be your best friend because it is the test menu button. In something like Violent Storm, the game options are going to be in the test menu. There is blood in Violent Storm, but by default it is turned off. You can change the difficulty, add the blood, anything you want. And if you're new to MAME, just remember to hit F2 to see what's in that test menu. But some games actually don't use a test menu, they use dip switches, which are changed in a different menu. And I will show you how to do that later on in the video. But you can see here, we got blood and we are good to go. Now let's take a look at something like Hyper Neo Geo 64. This is not a CHD program, but it does use a bio zip file as well. Now I know that that's the case, I know I need it. But let's remove it from the folder and get it out of the actual ROMs directory and see what happens. 
this is going to basically break the functionality of Hyper Neo Geo because when MAME goes to look for the BIOS zip file that has all the different diverse BIOS for different regions, it's not going to find it. You're going to get these warnings here and if you don't know what you're looking for, just Google the file name and you're going to probably find a reference to what you need. I'm going to put the HNG64.zip file back in the Hyper Neo Geo BIOS pack and then when I go to launch Beast Busters again, it's going to give me a select system BIOS. Here's the thing about MAME, some systems need a BIOS, others do not. It's kind of similar to CHD, except there's no folderization, and the naming conventions don't matter as far as any folders, because they are not involved whatsoever. But now you see we can jump into Beast Buster Second Nightmare on the Hyper Neo Geo 64 in MAME, and this is one of my favorite arcade games of all time. I've got the arcade board in my closet, and for reasons I'm only showing you games in this video that I own and I have in my personal collection. But the fact that Hyper Neo Geo 64 even works this well is down to MAME Haze and his dedication to trying to get this working better. I sent him some footage last year to help better emulate certain things in Bariki 1. I do try to help out the MAME people when I can. Not as smart as they are, but I can lend a hand here in there and everything looks great except we have green blood and that is just not going to work for me whatsoever this is a zombie game they are exploding blood and i need that blood to be red so if you hit f2 again you're going to get into another test menu sometimes in the test menu though for some strange reason on certain boards exiting back out to the game just does not work whatsoever so you go into game options that's where all the game options for pretty much any board are going to be move around whatever you want and then go ahead and hit exit if you find that you do not get out of the test menu and if you hit f2 and don't end up out of the test menu from there i recommend just restarting the core that is going to save all the settings in my experience and you should be out totally fine so just hit the tab button again that's the hot menu for mame Go to select new system, hit enter, it's going to bring you back to the MAME menu, and just hit enter again and relaunch the game. Now we're into Beast Buster Second Nightmare, and we have that glorious red blood squirting out of the zombies. In my opinion, that's the only way to play this game, and if you are new to MAME or arcade emulation, you're probably not going to know all about what test menus are and how they work. Now as far as what games need BIOS files, I'm going to get to that in a little bit later in the video. But what I want to do now is go over some of the other diverse settings that you need to take a look at when you start. If you double click on general settings, customize UI, honestly there's not much in there for you whatsoever. Configure folder should be the same. Video options, video mode, you're going to have a bunch of different wrappers. Just leave it as auto. This will do the job for you. It'll pick whatever it needs to do. I wouldn't change anything whatsoever. Obviously, bilinear filtering is on by default. I suggest you turn it off, but you can do whatever you want. Enforced aspect ratio, always leave that on or else you may end up with a screen that is stretched and doesn't conform to the aspect ratio of the game's release. Sound options, you really don't need to go into this menu whatsoever. I would ignore it completely, but do be aware that it does exist. If we go down into miscellaneous options, you're going to see you can skip the imperfect emulation warnings. I leave that off because I want to know if I'm going to anticipate problems in certain games. Not everything runs 100% in MAME. That's not a dig, it's just the status of the emulation. And if you want to have cheats, you can turn them on here. You have to find different cheat files and add them later. If you want to see a part 2 on more deeper dives of MAME, leave me a comment down below. Everything else I would just pretty much leave as is. All of these things have been selected for you, and by leaving them as their default setting as you see here, MAME is going to give you the most amount of information MAME is going to give you, which is not always going to be as much as you need. On input device options here, if you do want to play light gun games, you can select a joystick, you can select a light gun, you can select a mouse, which is usually going to be everybody's default. There's different options. If you want to see a light gun specific MAME tutorial, tell me down below as well, because I'm trying not to make this video 30 minutes. Otherwise, for the most part, everything is going to be totally normal as is. If we go down to input assignments, that just can allow you to change other controls right here. This is what it would bind to by default if you didn't have a controller plugged in, but generally you're going to use an external control device, so you just want to deal with that in the input menu I showed you earlier in the video. There are a ton of inputs, and most of them aren't going to be important to you, unless it's an edge case scenario. Under advanced options, frame skip, I leave this off. I have a powerful enough computer to be able to run most games at full speed. Well, pretty much every game at full speed that will run that way. But if you do find that you're having some issues on a game that should run full speed and doesn't on your system, you can turn frame skip on. Otherwise, up here, you can do a little bit of a joystick dead zone to allow you to have a little more dead zone in your analog if you so choose. But let's move over to something like Haunted Castle. Not because I think this is a good game, I think it's actually not a very good game whatsoever. 
but this comes to the third type of game that you're going to be running in MAME. It just uses a zip file, but it does not really have anything in the way of a test menu. Certain games, especially older ones, are going to change all of their settings via dip switches. That would be a package of little tiny switches on the arcade board in and of itself that you would actually have to change with a pen or your fingernail. If you hit tab and go to dip switches, you can adjust the game's difficulty, you can allow yourself to be a stronger or weaker opponent, and you can allow continues up to three times, which is the cruelest thing, I think. Be aware that older games use this dip package setting, and 99% of the time it's going to be in the tab menu under dip switches. That's the thing, sometimes it's a test menu, sometimes it's a dip switch, but just be aware that they are there. These are not video games that you buy and put in a console that have an options menu. These are meant just for arcade operators to change in the background, so they function in a completely different manner than anything else you've seen before if you're not familiar with arcade emulation. And now that we've made this game easy and made Simon stronger, it is still basically an impossible game to play. It is one of the most difficult things around, but it was one of the first games I remembered using dip switches and something that I thought everyone would be curious to see. Now, if you want to find out what a particular game needs to run, Arcade Italia here has Arcade Database. Just type in whatever game you want to find out, in this instance Beastbuster Second Nightmare, and it's going to show you whether or not a good dump of the game exists, but the most important toggle is going to be down here. Required Files. It says Show Main Required Files. If you hit this little arrow right here, you're going to see it says you need HNG64.zip, and that's going to mark the file type as BIOS. Whatever game you want to play, correlate it here with Arcade Italia, and it'll tell you every single file you need. Because MAME is going to tell you the individual BIOS names are missing, Arcade Italia is going to tell you what the file that you're looking for is. But if you follow all of these steps, you're going to be getting CHD games playing in MAME, you're going to be getting normal games playing in MAME, you'll be able to get through the test menu, bind your controllers, and start having fun. But I get it, off the top, MAME can seem like a very daunting program, and I've been using it for years, so if you run into any issues, I got that Patreon link down below. But if you follow this tutorial and use Arcade Italia's website and set everything up the way I showed you, you're going to be enjoying MAME in no time. Hope you enjoyed this, we'll see you for the next tutorial, and I am done. Bye bye